Not a part of the training, though. Since the beginning of the full-scale war in Ukraine, millions have stood up to fight against the aggressor. The world is proving that Ukraine is not alone in this. People from all over the world have united in their willingness to help Ukrainians. My uh, professional life is I, I work in renewable energy, uh, but I have a background doing uh, mountain search and rescue back in Los Angeles County, and so that uh, gave me the medic training that I apply here as an instructor. Ukrainian army has grown three times due to mobilization and the high motivation of people to fight. That's why Dan established the Trident Defense Initiative to help foreign instructors share their knowledge most effectively. I came to Ukraine to join the military, uh, joined the Ukrainian Marines. I was a 36th Brigade, 1st Battalion. Uh, I deployed to the ATO and the terrorist operations twice, um, for eight months and ten months, uh, in 2019 and 20 to 21. Dan started his military career in the British Army, then volunteered in Syria, Myanmar and Colombia. On February 24, he was on leave at his house in Bucha. I basically ran an aid station in my basement. I took um, medicine from different pharmacies that were closed off. Um, we, as volunteers, we opened up the, the pharmacies. And, uh, I ran about an aid station. We were responsible for giving medicine and giving treatments to about 400 people in Bucha. 14 instructors are training soldiers at the moment. Some specialize in medicine and some in tactics. Since the end of March, TDI has trained over 3,000 students. The organization works only at the request of the brigade's commanders. So it's a chance for the two big groups that we're training, the tactical soldiers and the medics, to work together in a simulated combat scenario. Medical training is the most substantial part of the TDI program. They rely heavily on March and TC3 protocols. In the other part of the range, the tactical groups are practicing close combat techniques. Uh, it's been difficult because sometimes I don't want to let the soldiers that I get to work with go off. You know, we develop, uh, develop a pretty strong bond, but I understand that my job is here now. It's not only the Ukrainian soldiers who are studying. The TDI team is also in constant search for new skills. Sometimes ex-students bring the trophy Soviet weapons gained in the fight, so the instructors learn how it works. Getting electrifying, yeah. Um, I'm glad that the Ukrainians gave me the opportunity to, uh, especially after the, the such appreciation of our training. We get to come out and play with them a little bit and see what they do. That uh, was great. The um, thing is, though, is uh, the second engine didn't take off, apparently. Um, that's obviously, you know, good Russia equipment. Just in the middle of the training, the area was attacked with several S-300 rockets. This reminds that there is no safe place in Ukraine now, no matter if you're a soldier, instructor or a civilian. The moment we got from the base uh, to have some meal, there was seven uh, airstrikes. We don't know what's the situation at the moment, just hope everyone is all right. Fortunately, there were no casualties this day, and everyone was safe due to clear safety protocols and poor aiming. Rockets hit the exact same building that the Russians previously destroyed in the spring. After the rocket attack to the training base, uh, we, everyone is leaving, the instructors and soldiers also. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen next. We're just uh, trying to get safe. Danger is not a reason to stop training. For the instructors, it's not the first and most likely not the last time they work in extremely dangerous conditions, such as the wartime reality. We're, we're not going to stop, obviously. Uh, we'll always keep going. The soldiers keep going, the civilians keep going, so no reason that we won't keep going as well. Zhenia Melnik, United24 Media.